John, thank you. Chattanooga's homeless population is growing every year. Faith-based charities are playing a major role in giving food and hope to those who live on the edges of our society. Under the bridges we drive over daily live dozens of people. They travel from as far away as Texas, Michigan and New York to live in tent cities in Chattanooga. Many come in search of work and a better future. And two charities are doing all they can to help. Alan Cantrell is the founder of Scenic City Arc. And every Sunday for nearly two years, his team voluntarily feed between 300 and 400 of our cities hungry. If we don't time it just right, sometimes they get a little antsy. Some, and some of them will try to cut line and it starts bickering and arguing. And then we either have to break it up or make them leave. We don't like to do that. His team of more than 30, including security, is made up of families, veterans and college students. But all have one thing in common, their faith. We're not snake handlers, we are food handlers. By 2 p.m., crews are in place cooking hundreds of hot dogs in Eastridge, while others head to East 11th Street to get the Sunday lunch tables ready. We ended up with hot dogs today. I hope y'all are okay with that. Chattanooga's homeless all have different stories of struggle. Very important. Yeah, I mean, if it wasn't for Christians to kind of like fill in the gap sometimes when it comes to food, then, then a lot of folks would go hungry. To me, Chattanooga was a better place for me. Now, I can't say that for everybody else, you know, but uh, just believe in your faith, man, and, uh, and, and, let the, and just follow the yellow brick road, man. Just but one of those being helped is a true success story. Tree Smith has spent a decade on the streets. My truck threw a rod, so it broke down. Uh, all my tools got stowed out of it. It got towed and left me with nothing. Helped by Scenic City Arc and Ministry Relevant Hope, he has got his life back on track. He works at Coke's Bakery on Broad Street and has moved into this house. But what do Chattanoogans think of the scenic city emerging as a top homeless destination? I do think sometimes that when someone has an issue that helping them too much can be a thing, but I don't think that it's ever wrong to feed someone. I mean, it's unfortunate that other cities aren't taking care of their people and that their people are coming to us. On the other hand, I think it speaks well of our southern hospitality. Tree believes the support he's received in Chattanooga saved his life. You give up, you, you are a new house. Now, City City Arc estimate they can feed 300 people on just $200 and are working with area churches. Relevant Hope are reaching out to high schools, including Howard, hoping to break the stigma surrounding homelessness. They came out in their hundreds last Saturday and for Chattanooga against Monsanto, the fight must go on. Insect bites these crops and their insides explode. I mean, and it kills them to, I mean, how is that, how are you going to tell me that that's safe for me? Campaigner Frank Eaton believes transparency is the answer. Tell us what we're eating. Let us make our own informed choice instead of removing informed consent on what sounds like more of an experiment with our food supply. For Chattanooga organic farmer John Greelings, informing the public that genetically modified crops are different to his own is now crucial. Water is required to be labeled, but genetically modified pesticides are not required to be labeled. You can just call genetically modified corn, corn on an ingredient list. Monsanto spokesman Thomas Helcher told News 12, while we respect each individual's right to express their view on these topics, we believe we are making a contribution to improving agriculture by helping farmers produce more from their land. UTC professor Dr. Jose Barbosa disagrees with the way Monsanto affects farmers, but said it is important to remember that these scientists are highly trained professionals. Believe me, people that work in producing genetically modified organisms are uh, leading scientists in the area. He added there is no need for major concern and that protesting has other knock-on effects. Protesting may be important because if you don't protest, you may not increase the awareness or you may not uh, push scientists to be even more cautious than they actually are. Chattanooga against Monsanto are now focusing on getting their voices heard in political circles in East Tennessee. Um, Frank Nicely from District 17 has uh, agreed to sponsor this GMO labeling bill. Another protest is planned in the coming months.
Map the meal gap research by Feeding America has put Georgia and Tennessee children among the top 20 most deprived of food in our nation. Children were obviously hungry. So we went to our kitchen and started pulling things out, crackers, um, fruit. I had an apple that I had brought for lunch. The children ate like they were desperate and they ate everything that we could pull out to give them. At Metropolitan Ministries, they say they have seen a rise in children needing food in recent months, with many being fed chips and soda for dinner. The organisation has turned to running a free grocery store and teaching people how to grow their own crops. Anywhere anybody can throw some dirt in a bucket and, and grow your own fresh produce. It doesn't require programs or mandates, just a little dirt and a little sweat. They say a lack of cooking knowledge, poverty and education among parents are leaving more children hungry at night. At United Methodist Church in Ringgold, they say 52% of children in Catoosa County are struggling to get fed on a daily basis. For four years, 1,500 bags every single week have been donated to children who need food the most here in North Georgia. We had a mother that called on a Monday morning and say, thank goodness for your bags. I didn't get paid Friday. You know, my, my boss ran out of money. <laughs> and uh, that was the only food we had for the weekend. Theo Pinkston and his wife, with a team of loyal volunteers, felt they had to set up nourishing children in Catoosa because parents either didn't want to or couldn't feed their families. Uh, I think there are some parents that really try but just do not have enough money. Uh, there are some parents that are just plain lazy. Chattanooga-based United Way's 211 service say 40% of calls are now for food assistance, which comes to a staggering 18,000 requests a year. Due to high demand, they are linking up with the YMCA summer feeding program to make sure children have something to eat once their schools close. Uh, we actually prepare food and lunches and breakfast uh, for kids and take them to their homes and to the places where they are. So we eliminate that barrier for need to travel we travel to them and meet the need. Volunteers say they have seen a sharp rise in grandparents stepping up to feed their grandchildren when they come home from school to empty fridges.